This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Ross Partridge and Jennifer LaFleur from LAM. Uh, some of you may remember Jennifer from probably at least two times, I believe, with Dodeca. I think we did Seattle and South by yeah. Southwest, so you're a veteran, and Ross, you're a welcome new addition. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> let's start with LAM. Uh, LAM is a very interesting, unique film because it's really built upon two key performances. Um, Una's in Jennifer's. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she steals the movie, of course. Yeah. That and six years. You got that. Exactly. Going. Uh, you're already. You're, you're on top of big Southwest moments. Southwest, big but, moments. Um, when you went to put this film together, was that something that you looked at as a um, smart move or a difficult challenge that you were going to have to overcome? Because I mean, the second role, major, major role as a child, and they always say never act with animals and children, and so you're kind of right off the bat, we're going against uh, conventional wisdom with the films. I think everything uh, about this was going against conventional wisdom, and I think that's probably why we actually went forward with it. Um, it wasn't really a concern of mine, um, being that it was only two characters. I think that it, there's a type of intimacy in this that is, is unique and is refreshing you know you really get really personal with these two two people so um, I never looked at it in the scope of you know that I never thought that oh I'm about to chat you know attack on something that it's gonna be all dependent on myself I felt like the story the need of the story was so strong that I felt like if we could just not get in the way of the story we'd be okay and from your perspective, Jennifer, you are both acting and a producer on the movie. What was that like for you to sort of, I mean, acting is enough of a challenge in and of itself, but you're like, all right, I want more, more responsibility. What was that like in terms of you and your career? Well, luckily with this movie, I was only an actor for one day of the entire process. So it was very much about being a co-producer and, and just being whatever kind of support I could be to Ross and executing his vision because I believed in, in, what he wanted to do with this with this project. I mean, he brought me the book and, and said, I really want to make this into a movie. What do you think? And when I read it, I just knew that not only did it have to be made into a movie, but I felt like Ross was the only one who would be able to do it the kind of justice for the movies that we like to see. Um, so it, the whole process was just about supporting supporting him and, and making making it happen however he wanted it to happen. It's a really amazing story, but it dances a very fine line. Uh, how difficult was it to keep it in a realm of like, this character could go pretty much one of two ways, very much right into the end, and you're not skewing it so much that everyone's like, oh, he's X, Y, and Z from the beginning, or the other way. I mean, either way, it's a very fine line to walk. I, mean, I think all the way through, we were very conscientious of that. We knew that uh, we had to be very uh, focused in on, on trying to uh, re keep the character as long as we could and make him, if at all, uh, um, more approachable at every, at every moment, find the for me as an actor playing the character, finding as much empathy and compassion and love for this character, and hopefully that, that would translate. And, and um, I think that there were very specific points in the script that we knew that we had to dance and handle very, very carefully. Um, and also not wanting to, you know, in the, in the other direction of that as well, is not, you know, try to placate to an audience and try to be too safe in the regards of the psychology of this character and we need to put that forefront and be honest and true to the book and true to this character so you know we, we covered ourselves in a lot of different ways but we would have options on things and, and, and you know talk to one another about after a take and be like does it feel one direction are we such maybe we should lighten it up or maybe we should do this and so we were very meticulous all the way through. Yeah, I mean, uh, throughout a lot of the pre-production, Mel Eslin and Taylor Williams were our producers, and Ross and I, we would have these long, drawn-out conversations about how far you should push it or where we should pull back, and that continued, you know, throughout pre-production and then actual production and post-production, just really, like, you know, just carving out the perfect balance as, as best as we could. The environment plays a pretty big role in it. It's like, I guess, the third 
listed character, if you were to sort of like give it its own uh, title card. Um, what was it like in terms of getting all those locations together, sort of really bringing the cinematography into the experience of the storytelling and whatnot? It seems like, I mean, I, I, I was telling Jeff for yesterday or two days, I don't even know, it's all blurring <laughs> together at this point here. But I was telling you that like, I've been seeing the photos from this film on Facebook for, I don't know, a year or something now. And I was like, <laughs> when is this film coming out? Because the photos and cinematography are so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, the... You know, the whole movie set up on the on the idea that uh, a man and a young girl are going to try to go on this spiritual journey to try to see the more beauty in the world, and that's the promise that, that the character makes, and that's the promise that the book makes, so we were very conscientious of, of making sure that we could experience the, the depravity and darkness of where they come from, and then the alternate side of that would be something that opens up a very expansive and, and landscapes that just seem never never ending. Um, so we had the fortune of shooting in, in Laramie, Wyoming, and if anybody's ever been to Wyoming, it's exactly that. It's just <laughs> huge sky, beautiful mountainscapes, beautiful rivers, beautiful everything there. Um, and it was very, very uh, key for Nate, uh, Nate Miller, the DP, did a wonderful job. He and I just, you know, we wanted to compose a, a photo, almost like photography, just kind of like sitting, steeping in these beautiful things so that the, the world just slowly just kind of melts into these characters' hearts, you know. In terms of the acting in the movie, obviously, you know, your own capabilities as an actor, you know, Jennifer's abilities and what What is it like trying to cast that child role? Because that's such a key part in the movie, and it's like, if you fuck that up, yeah. it could fuck pretty much everything we up. We pretty much so, won the lottery on exactly, that. Yeah. So yeah. It seems like that could have been a very yeah, difficult we, we, piece. <clears throat> we knew that if, if we couldn't find the right girl to play Tommy that we weren't going to shoot the movie. It was that simple. Uh, and you hear that a lot. You hear people say that, you know, when they're doing working with kids. But uh, I, I've said it before, our casting director was really smart and she, you know, early on she said to us that there's only going to be about five kids who could actually play this part. Really. I mean, you could, you could, make, you could try to make it work, but there's not actually five kids who are capable of actually taking on the challenges of this role. And so we saw a bunch, but there were a few. And then as soon as we met Una, it was just, it was a game changer. And we just all could not believe how simple of a process it was. Uh, we immediately knew that we had something special. She's one of the best actors I've ever worked with. I've learned so much from her every day. And uh, she's now become one of our family. Yeah. Yeah. And in many ways, it wasn't her fitting into the world of the movie. It was almost the world of the movie shaping around her and Ross and the, and the connection and relationship that they developed just as friends and actors in real life. Was it tough to pitch the families of these children on this movie? Because, like, if you just said, like... Here's no, a, actually. Here's it. No? I'll trump you right there. It seems no. like if you could hand them that book and be like, read it, like, it could be very well, easy yeah, for them to be yeah. like... I don't know if I want my kid to be in this, not seeing the grander picture of what you're trying to make of it. Well, hopefully uh, parents who have kids who are doing this are looking at the grander picture, you know, and, and that they're taking that into consideration. The uh, most, there was numerous, numerous uh, parents who, Una's parents, for example, her dad, they were, she has two other sisters, they live very busy lives. Uh, he somehow didn't make the audition, and his and the mother and was working with the other daughter on a TV show out in Chicago, and she got the script. The father didn't have time to take Una to the audition, and and the mom just started reading it, and she couldn't put it down. She wow. called the dad immediately, and she said, "You need to get Una to this audition. She has to play this part." That's pretty amazing. So, her dad and I became very qu quick confidants and, and very good friends, still are, and. Um, they saw the bigger picture. They saw that this is a, an opportunity and, and they saw the message of this movie and they felt it was really important. You know, As a parent, knowing the, the volatility of a child at a certain age and how you know, there are a lot of kids out there who don't, who are suffer that don't have the same type of love that, that, that their child has and how crucial it can be in, in determining the, the future of their lives, the trajectory of their lives. What was it like cultivating your chemistry with her? Like, did yeah. you actually go aside and like spend some time just getting to know each other? Because there's some very intense scenes that the two of you go through, and it would be, I mean, I'm 32 going on 33. This is like, I don't young. know how I would prepare for some of those scenes, and I'm an adult at this point. Yeah, I, I spent a week with Una 
uh, uh, rehearsing and spent you know a good five or six hours a day for a week. Um, but again, it was one of those things. It was she, she's such a trusting, amazing, amazingly smart young actor. There were times where we were rehearsing and I we'd talk about the scene and she would be drawing and kind of like I couldn't tell if she was actually paying attention or was like really like but it, for her she just got it and it was not a big deal and all the scene the third day of shooting I mean an homage to that is the third it was our second or third day of shooting we shot the end of the movie which is a, a highly emotional scene and Everybody on the crew, you know, after her second take was just literally, I looked up and the sound guy was crying. He was like, you know, this young 22 year old dude was like literally bawling in tears for the performance that she was giving and it was just so spot on. So we knew that, you know, she, it, it comes very easy to her and she just, she's an extremely intelligent actor at 11 years, at 12 years old. Now. Yeah, very vulnerable, yeah. very open. Yeah. From your perspective, Jennifer, as someone who is an actress who's done this for a long yeah. time, what is it like to A, watch somebody that young do these performances, and B, what is it like stepping behind the camera and sort of becoming more of a producer, writer, mm -hmm. whatever, as you watch these other people acting out these roles? Are you, are you simply thinking like, oh, I would do it this way, or this is how I would interpret this, or any of that no, kind of stuff? No, not at all. Just, just um what every single actor brought to these characters was so inspiring and and it was never about like I would do it differently I would I you know if I would say the line this way it was just about um, you know really paying attention to the story that we were trying to tell and and knowing really clearly what Ross wanted you know and, and you know myself and Mel and Taylor were often his eyes on the outside just making sure that his story was being told but watching Una it was it was inspiring and, and it, it and it kind of instills a holy jealousy inside of you where you don't you don't feel uh, resentful of of that talent and what she's doing you just want to aspire to bring magic to one of the characters that I play in the future as much as she brought to Tommy and for you since you've had so many different experiences you know working in TV working film web series yeah how does all of those different experiences influence the way you approach working on a film like this as a producer? Does it, I don't know, have certain events from different experiences shape the way you approach what yeah. you had to do on this project? I think that every experience shapes the way that we do it and, and we learn so much from, from each thing that we do and, and Ross is such a proponent of go out and do it and you'll figure out what works and what doesn't work and you'll figure out it very quickly and so I think every experience that we've had just makes us um, better storytellers which is what acting is, it's what producing is, it's what directing is and you know and hopefully next time we make something we'll be even better storytellers and we'll just kind of continue to, to develop and, and expand upon that. The film theoretically can be interpreted many different ways um, and that's probably a good thing to be able to have somewhat of a provocative film that makes people think is it at all I hope it's somewhat of a good thing yeah <laughs> but uh, I mean some people don't respond well to negative criticism or stuff like that is that something that you are what do you mean? unafraid like, I mean if some I mean people, what do you mean <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what, what are you please, saying? I'm out of here. Drop We've not, I've never, uh, never gotten any exactly, yeah, no. have, we, have we? Exactly. It's just, it's just like, so, I mean, some, I mean, I'm not going to name names. There are yeah. certain filmmakers who I, have, <laughs> I have spoken to who really just want to have their ego stroked and they don't care yeah. about starting a conversation. They purely just want yeah. everyone to love them. They only care about pleasing an audience and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that something... How do you mentally prepare yourself for that as you put this character out there that could be negatively perceived? Like, I, I, I enjoyed the movie, but for instance, like uh, the movie Very Bad Things. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah, of course. Genre. I look at that movie and I have a tough time watching it because yeah. I look at it and I'm like, everyone in this movie is an asshole. How can I give a shit about what negative shit happens to any of these people? Right, and yeah. so. Do you, do you mentally say, like, look, I know a certain amount of people are going to come at me and be like, I don't like you in this movie, I don't like that character? Right. Or do you just sort of, like, like how, do you, how do you prepare yourself mentally for that kind of feedback, I guess? Well, I mean, obviously, when, you, when I read the, the story, I, I knew that from the get-go. It was going to be the challenge. But it also is, you know, this movie is like a Rorschach test for people, and it's a, yeah. kind of interesting true, to see yeah. how, it, like, how people respond and where they're at, that, you know, and their response and how vehement, very good vehement their responses can be. Um, 
No, I welcome you know the conversation because the people what people how people want to define this movie. I, I truly know and I truly believe. You know, uh, you can go out and say this guy. I, I don't understand him. Therefore, I don't like him. Therefore, I can't comprehend it. So therefore, no, I'm not going to pay attention to it. But for me, uh, I know. I know the answers of this. I know what this character is about. Anybody who wants to come at with the antithesis and say it's one thing or one thing, I, I know that it's not. So it's a matter of allowing people to exercise their own, you know, ability to exercise a different part of their, their mind and their heart and understanding somebody that's a little more complex and you can't just kind of predetermine who they are and label them as one specific thing. I think you're absolutely right though. It is a very much a Rorschach test and you, the way people interpret yeah. intentions very much could speak to how they feel about life or how they think. Because you could easily see it very positively and sort of uplifting sure. or you could look at it and be just like when is something going to drop? When is this going to go wrong? Yeah. All that yeah. sort of stuff. I mean, there are plenty of people who walk through life like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And you know what? A long time ago, we, we embraced the fact that this could be a very polarizing project. But thus far, the reviews and the responses from the audiences, people really get it and understand. And they feel uncomfortable. And it doesn't mean that they think that David Lamb is doing the right thing or a great guy. But but they're really understanding um, the, the, the heart of the movie, which is exciting. And, and yeah, ultimately, really people seem to be seeking out the potential potentiality of hope and, and the possibility of people not necessarily always doing the right thing, but, but really the desire to want to be better in life and, and searching out love in a higher way. And I think that everybody, you know, that's a struggle for everybody. It's universal. Um, you know, look, I'd rather do something in this realm and die trying than actually do something that's just trying to appease and try to be safe and try to, you know, do oh, the mundane great. of filmmaking. Yeah. So. Does making a film like this affect the way you sort of think about releasing it? Like, do you try and keep it longer on the festival circuit because those might be more intelligent audiences to get something like this? Or do you, I don't know, go to VOD or do you go to Netflix? Or like, how, how does making a project like this that is going to be kind of cerebral or very emotional, um, affect how you want to get that out to people and sort of maximize the way people are able to interpret it. Yeah, I think that you want to be very conscientious of how building an audience as much as possible and building a conversation. I'm, I'm really willing to have as much of a conversation as possible about this and I think people will want to talk about it. Um, and then also on the distribution level, trying to find people who are, are going to nurture it in the same way and, and want to be very uh, specific on how they release it into the world. We're not going to try to like sell this as one thing, put you know covers of our, our, our faces on this and sell it as a thriller because it's not. It's 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 something deeper. So I, I don't think that we're going to be uh, looking to manipulate or try to misinterpret what this this story is. And in terms of like showing this to your guys' families and stuff with Partridge family and whatnot. Uh, I've been working, holding that for, I don't know, two hours now. Jesus. I go for the easy ones. I'm glad I was here. Uh, uh, what, what is their sort of response? I mean, obviously, I suspect some of them were more familiar with the process as it was going on. Some of them probably didn't see it till the end project. What is, like, their response and sort of to see it through? These people are so close and personal to you and get sort of their interpretations and their perspectives and stuff like that. Not all of our family has has seen it yet. Uh, a lot of dun, them want to wait. Dun. Yeah, they want to wait and, until they see it on the big screen. But I, I think that they they understand where we're coming from with with the material, and they're really excited about it and supportive. And they know that that it's it's you know tricky tricky lines being walked. But I think that that audiences are, are hungry for material like this. We don't want to be pandered to, you know, with the, with the same old thing all the time and have like just comedies or horror films. You know, they're looking for something that makes them think deeper and, and our families are those audiences and I think that there are a lot more people like that too. Have you got into, as we speak of like the Rorschach test, are there certain family members who are like, uh -huh, Uncle Larry, so that's the way you see this movie. Right. It will be interesting to well, see. Well, Uncle Larry, this is about you. Yeah. Uh, not making any judgments, Uncle Larry. Yeah, yeah, but not making any judgments, but remember <laughs> that time, the great adventure? No. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, all kidding aside. There's um, no Uncle Larry. <laughs> I have a pretty relatively small family, so... Uh, uh, my sister has seen the movie and she read the book. You know, people 
I think we're all we share a commonality where we're all kind of uh, involved in what we're doing. So there's no there's not going to be any great surprises on my end. Yeah, it's fantastic. So Lamb World premiered here at World South by South. South by. Um, next stops, any place? Next stop, a couple of festivals already lined up. Cool. We're starting to field yeah. more offers, and uh, we're going to end up That's in so Sarasota oh, next. Very cool. and, um, Official announcements will be yeah. kind of coming out. And is there a Somewhere. website, Twitter, anything people should yeah, follow? Yeah, at keep, Lamb like, the Film, and then we're also on Facebook as Lamb the Film. Very cool. And yeah. the two of you, do you have any other projects you want people to keep tabs on or personal <clears throat> Twitters, yeah. Facebooks, or whatever? Well, if you're looking up? for something a little bit lighter, a project that we made together last year called Wedlock is on oh, iTunes and Hulu. Oh, and yeah, I was one of the creators. That. Yeah, Ross and I directed the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so we do that with Mark Duplass yeah, yeah, and Rob Cordray. Yeah. So yeah, it's completely opposite than this. Yeah, <laughs> if you want a comedy, yeah. Yeah, you want to laugh. That's, after that's pretty great. Um, Twitter's, Facebooks, anything you guys want people to follow? Because as I said, like I saw the photos of this yeah. a year or something in yeah. advance. Instagram, uh, Lamb yeah, film. Instagram seriously, yep. and uh, Facebook Lamb film. Yeah, and he's at Partridge Ross, and I'm at Lafleur Jennifer. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I wish you wish you guys the best of Thanks luck so with this much. film. Best of luck with Wedlock as well, and. Can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thanks so, Thanks so much. much.